Waller also added in his comments that data is as good as it gets, but again, he said the rate should be lowered methodically and carefully. So give me a sense. How did you read this? Was this dovish or was this simply the data-dependent Fed that we keep hearing about? You know, this is the data-dependent Fed we keep hearing about. And, and here's the thing is the Fed funds futures have priced in six rate cuts for this year alone. I doubt that the Fed is going to get three in this year. And that's a big difference in terms of where rates end up at the, at the end of the year. And the equity markets are priced for all six of those rate cuts. In fact, to some degree, they need them to justify um, where their multiples are right now. And quite frankly, the bond market needs those as well. Otherwise, you're going to feel some bond pain at the long end um, as that inverted yield curve sort of works itself out this year. So every single market right now is poised for a lot of Fed cuts that I don't think are going to happen as quickly as they're priced in. So you don't think a lot of Fed cuts are happening. Just give me a sense. The market's still pricing in six. Where are you at, Gina? So I'm probably at two to three. Oh, okay. A bit of a contrarian there. Uh, Mark, I'm going to come over to you. Same question as I asked Gina. Um, the comments from Waller, were they dovish? Is this the dovish talk that everybody's been waiting for? Or was it simply just more maintaining the data-dependent uh, Fed that we keep hearing about, whether it's Jerome Powell or other Fed speakers? Well, we, we've always said two to three rate hikes in 2024, and there were reasons for that. The, the job market is just way too strong. Wage growth remains it's very it's very reasonable there in the three to four percent wage hike range that a Fed then doesn't cut. When you have unemployment below four and wages close to four percent on the increase, you're not going to get a Fed that's going to reignite inflation. And we've said a Fed that was wrong on the other side of this movement that they weren't going to try to scramble and look like they had lost control of the battle. They want to bury inflation. Inflation is not close to their 2% target. And I think it's a continuation of what the Fed was saying all along, except we had a little pillow talk late in the fourth quarter that investors jumped on and thought it was a massive change. It was just a bit of a hint that they realized inflation was coming down, but not beaten. And I think that's where the misconception was. I think we have to look forward to a stronger economy in 2024. Not okay. robust, but just a bit too strong for the Fed to get dovish. All right, Mark Evelyn calling it pillow talk, all the market exuberance. Gene, I want to come back over to you. You're watching the spread on the two-year and the 10-year. It's actually the narrowest that we've seen since October of last year. What does that signal to you? What do you think that means about the market going forward, at least until we get the next PCE? So, look, I think we have to see where we land in terms of this slowdown. You know, I think there are now very, very few economists holding on to, you know, recession talk. Now we're, we're just looking at maybe 1.2 percent growth next year, which is still a slowdown from this year, by the way. And so, you know, we are still, you know, slated to slow down. And these higher interest rates are still working their way through, through the economy. They haven't really hit the high yield market. They haven't hit, you know, the, there's still a lot of segments of the market. They haven't really even hit kind of the credit card balances um, that we still see consumer spending on credit cards. Now, that's starting to slow, and at some point that's going to bite as well. So all of those slowdowns will have to happen. Um, but I don't think it's going to okay. slow enough for the 10-year the, the to sort of stay where it is. We right. have to get back to normal. Yeah, a, a lot of people watching that spread between the 2-year and the 10-year, so something we'll continue to watch. Mark, before we go, I want to come back to you. I actually want to come full circle. You're calling some of the talk about the Fed cuts as some pillow talk, but at the same time, Waller said inflation is on target. He also has called the jobs number that was stronger than expected noise. You're watching earnings season very closely. How does the 2% rise in the dollar the volatility in the oil market. How does this all factor in with what you're saying is the data-dependent Fed? Well, I agree with a lot of what Gina said and that the Fed lags haven't really taken effect. I think that earnings going forward are going to be the key. Have our companies going to be able to continue to live up to this market expectation of double-digit earnings growth? I think that's going to be the bottom line. It's been the Fed and it's been earnings, and that's what the market's going to look for. And we think that earnings ex estimates are a bit high. And when that happens, we're going to see the multiple, especially in the very highly valued stocks. We think we're going to okay. see the pain there. And that's why we think investors should be broadening out exposure to look for a muddled growth okay. 2024. And I think that that's where we're going to see the, the real shakeout uh, looking forward.